Section 5 of The Pink Fairy Book. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Elliot Miller. The Pink Fairy Book by Andrew Lang. Rashimitero and the Turtle. From the Japanisch Marchen und Sagen von David Bronze, Leipzig, Wilhelm Friedrich. There was once a worthy old couple who lived on the coast and supported themselves by fishing. They had only one child, a son, who was their pride and joy, and for his sake they were ready to work hard all day long and never felt tired or discontented with their lot. This son's name was Urashimitero, which means in Japanese, son of the island, and he was a fine, well-grown youth and a good fisherman, minding neither wind nor weather. Not the bravest sailor in the whole village dared venture so far out to sea as Urashimitero and many a time the neighbors used to shake their heads and say to his parents, "'If your son goes on being so rash, one day he will try his luck once too often, and the waves will end by swallowing him up.' But Urashimitero paid no heed to these remarks, and as he was really very clever in managing a boat, the old people were very seldom anxious about him. One beautiful bright morning, as he was hauling his well-filled nets into the boat, he saw lying among the fishes a tiny little turtle. He was delighted with his prize, and threw it into a wooden vessel to keep till he got home, when suddenly the turtle found its voice, and tremblingly begged for its life. "'After all,' it said, "'what good can I do you? I am so young and small, and I would so gladly live a little longer. Be merciful and set me free, and I shall know how to prove my gratitude.' Now, Urashimitero was very good-natured, and besides he could never bear to say no, so he picked up the turtle and put it back into the sea. Years flew by, and every morning Urashimitero sailed his boat into the deep sea, but one day, as he was making for a little bay between some rocks, there arose a fierce whirlwind, which shattered his boat to pieces, and she was sucked under by the waves. Arashimitero himself very nearly shared the same fate, but he was a powerful swimmer and struggled hard to reach the shore. Then he saw a large turtle coming towards him, and above the howling of the storm he heard what it said. I am the turtle whose life you once saved. I will now pay my debt and show my gratitude. The land is still far distant, and without my help you will never get there. Climb on my back, and I will take you where you will. Arashimitero did not wait to be asked twice, and thankfully accepted his friend's help. But scarcely was he seated firmly on the shell when the turtle proposed that they should not return to the shore at once, but go under the sea and look at some of the wonders that lay hidden there. Arashimitero agreed willingly, and in another moment they were deep, deep down, with fathoms of blue water above their heads. Oh, how quickly they darted through the still warm sea! The young man held tight and marveled where they were going and how long they were to travel. But for three days they rushed on, till at last the turtle stopped before a splendid palace, shining with gold and silver, crystal and precious stones, and decked here and there with branches of pale pink coral and glittering pearls. But if Arashimitero was astonished at the beauty of the outside, he was struck dumb at the sight of the hall within, which was lighted by the blaze of fish scales. "'Where have you brought me?' he asked his guide in a low voice. "'To the palace of Ringu, the house of the sea-god, whose subjects we all are,' answered the turtle. "'I am the first waiting maid of his daughter, the lovely princess Otohimi, whom you will shortly see.' Arashimitero was still so puzzled with the adventures that had befallen him that he waited in a dazed condition for what would happen next. But the turtle— who had talked so much of him to the princess that she had expressed a wish to see him, went at once to make known his arrival. And directly the princess beheld him in her heart was set on him, and she begged him to stay with her, and in return promised that he should never grow old, neither should his beauty fade. "'Is that not reward enough?' she asked, smiling, looking all the while as fair as the sun itself. And Arashimitero said, "'Yes. So he stayed there. For how long? That he only knew later. His life passed by, and each hour seemed happier than the last, when one day there rushed over him a terrible longing to see his parents. 
he fought against it hard, knowing how it would grieve the princess. But it grew on him stronger and stronger, till at length he became so sad that the princess inquired what was wrong. Then he told her of the longing he had to visit his old home, and that he must see his parents once more. The princess was almost frozen with horror, and implored him to stay with her, or something dreadful would be sure to happen. "'You will never come back, and we shall meet again no more,' she moaned bitterly. But Arashimatero stood firm and repeated, "'Only this once will I leave you, and then I will return to your side for ever.' Sadly, the princess shook her head, but she answered slowly, "'One way there is to bring you safely back, but I fear you will never agree to the conditions of the bargain.' "'I will do anything that will bring me back to you,' exclaimed Arashimatero, looking at her tenderly. But the princess was silent. She knew too well that when he left her side she would see his face no more. Then she took from a shelf a tiny golden box and gave it to Arashimatero, praying him to keep it carefully, and above all things never to open it. "'If you can do this,' she said as she bade him farewell, "'your friend the turtle will meet you at the shore and will carry you back to me.' Arashimatero thanked her from his heart, and swore solemnly to do her bidding. He hid the box safely in his garments, seated himself on the back of the turtle, and vanished in the ocean path, waving his hand to the princess. Three days and three nights they swam through the sea, and at length Arashimatero arrived at the beach which lay before his old home. The turtle bade him farewell, and was gone in a moment. Arashimatero drew near to the village with quick and joyful steps. He saw the smoke curling through the roof and the thatch where green plants had thickly sprouted. He heard the children shouting and calling, and from a window that he passed came the twang of the koto, and everything seemed to cry a welcome for his return. Yet suddenly he felt a pang at his heart as he wandered down the street. After all, everything was changed. Neither man nor houses were those he once knew. Quickly he saw his old home. Yes, it was still there, but it had a strange look. Anxiously, he knocked at the door, and asked the woman who opened it after his parents. But she did not know their names, and could give no news of them. Still more disturbed, he rushed to the burying ground, the only place that could tell him what he wished to know. Here, at any rate, he would find out what it all meant, and he was right. In a moment he stood before the grave of his parents, and the date written on the stone was almost exactly the date when they had lost their son and he had forsaken them for the daughter of the sea. And so he found that since he had left his home, three hundred years had passed by. Shuddering with horror at the discovery, he turned back into the village street, hoping to meet someone who could tell him of the days of old. But when the man spoke, he knew he was not dreaming, though he felt as if he had lost his senses. In despair he bethought of the box which was the gift of the princess. Perhaps... After all this dreadful thing was not true. He might be the victim of some enchanter's spell, and in his hand lay the counter-charm. Almost unconsciously he opened it, and a purple vapor came pouring out. He held the empty box in his hand, and as he looked he saw that the fresh hand of youth had grown suddenly shriveled, like the hand of an old, old man. He ran to the brook, which flowed in a clear stream down from the mountain, and saw himself reflected in a mirror. It was the face of a mummy which looked back at him. Wounded to death, he crept back through the village, and no man knew the old, old man to be the strong, handsome youth who had run down the street an hour before. So he toiled wearily back till he reached the shore, and here he sat sadly on a rock and called loudly on the turtle. But she never came back any more. But instead, death came soon and set him free. But before that happened, the people who saw him sitting lonely on the shore had heard his story, and when their children were restless they used to tell them of the good son who from love to his parents had given up for their sakes the splendor and wonders of the palace in the sea, and the most beautiful woman in the world besides. End of Arashimatero and the Turtle Recording by Elliot Miller www.voiceofee.com